Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I'm the founder of Ashes to Beauty Ministries and today I want to talk to you about narcissists and gaslighting. Gaslighting is one of the most common forms of abuse that narcissists will employ and this is done for a few reasons. In this video I'm going to talk about what gaslighting is, why narcissists use it, and what you can do when you realize that you're being gaslighted. So first of all, gaslighting is a term that came about from a play that was actually developed in 1938 called Gaslight. And in this play, a narcissist makes his wife believe that everything that she's experiencing isn't true. So like her version of reality doesn't actually exist. And then in 1944, that was remade into a movie and it was called Gaslighting. And so that's where the term comes from. And that pretty much sums up what gaslighting is. Gaslighting is when the narcissist will make you believe that what you've experienced didn't actually happen. And not only did that not happen, they often replace it with their version of reality. So for example, let's say you're argu arguing and he calls you a name or something like that happens. Later on, maybe you're in, in counseling or maybe you're just trying to seek support and and bring somebody from the outside into this situation and you're telling your version of events and he is saying like that never happened I would never do that that's not what happened this is actually what occurred you're remembering it wrong and it can be as grand as completely rewriting history even under oath like if you're fighting a narcissist in court or it can be as subtle as making you believe that what they said never happened. You know, it could be even little things like you both agreed that he would do a chore, for example, in the house. When that doesn't get done, he'll say, like, no, that never happened. I never, you know, I didn't, I would never agree to it. If I did agree to it, I would have done it. Stuff like that, little things like this where it can cause you to start to doubt your own first of all, reality, like what you're experiencing, it can make you very insecure and believe that you are experiencing a mental break or that something is actually wrong with you. And it can also just make you not want to rely on your gut instincts or your memories and it can really start to dissolve your sense of identity and your sense of w what true north is. This is a very common a commonly employed tactic of narcissists and that's because it's easiest to manipulate events if you can pretend that that event never happened and if you can explain away or excuse away the behavior that you you know portrayed in that situation that you don't want the rest of the world to know about or to really find out that that's who you truly are. This may seem like, okay, what's the big deal? Like, he's gonna say this happened and I'm gonna say this happened. And obviously there's gonna be one truth and the truth will be found out. And to a certain degree, yes, that's true. On the other hand, this is an extremely dangerous situation to be in because it really makes people doubt their reality, their life that they are living. And when you're with a narcissist, there are already other forms of stealing somebody's identity. So in addition to gaslighting, it's usually layered on top of other forms of manipulation, other forms of abuse, other forms of, um, of taking away somebody's dreams and just the way that they viewed their life going. So there's other things that are happening here with gaslighting as it's employed by the narcissist. But really when you don't trust yourself, you're you're put in a position where the narcissist is then like the one you rely on and that's ultimately what they want I've talked about in previous videos how narcissists will operate and do things like triangulation and they will also make you very isolated and so they want to take away the former supports of your life that were in place before they came onto the scene so they want to make sure that they are the only for example, source for your financial uh, uh, dependence. They want to make sure that they are the source of your only emotional dependence. They want to make sure that they are the sole source for you because that ensures they have a supply no matter what. No matter what happens, no matter who else may leave them, you are not able to leave them and that's ultimately what they're trying to do here. And so through gaslighting, they're able to make sure that you now rely on them to tell 
the true version of events. You can't be trusted, you know, your memory cannot be trusted, your gut instincts cannot be trusted, and so therefore they become the source of like the the true north compass in all situations. And again, this just gives them more energy and as you become more dependent upon them, they become more and more the soul center of your whole world and that's exactly what they want to have happen. Gaslighting is also used so that you become just numb or accustomed to narcissistic abuse. So they want to have this happen over and over and over to the point where you just don't even defend yourself, you don't fight back, you don't expect things to be different, and so this will cut down on things like you seeking outside help, you looking to have the true version of events, uh, you know, written, written down or ha have them held accountable for their actions or their words, and they want it to become so normalized that you don't question what you're experiencing anymore. And it's another way to just ensure, again, that you become the sole supply for the narcissist, that no matter what else happens in, in their life, you're going to be the supply for them. So if you find yourself saying throughout this video, yes, this is what is happening to me, this is making so much sense to me why I've been experiencing certain things, or maybe you know somebody who this might be happening to and you're wondering what can you do about it, these are the things that I used myself and that I still recommend doing. So as soon as you realize like maybe this has happened to you a few times and you're like, am I going crazy? Do I not have a good memory? What is going on here? Start writing that stuff down as soon as something happens. You would know the narcissist that you're dealing with the best. So if there's a certain thing that he tends to do over and over, make sure that you write that down along with the date. So what I would do is whenever he would speak to me, whenever he would tell me something, I would write it down with the date and exactly what he said. I would also try to make sure that as much as possible my interactions were either through text messages, through email, some sort of electronic communication, or if that wasn't possible that I had somebody in the room present with me or wherever I was so that they could also verify. Second of all, the second thing that I started doing was really being honest with some of my dearest friends, some of my very close friends about what was happening. So as soon as he would tell me something or do something to me, I would tell them this is what he said, this is what he did. So again, because gaslighting is only one of the many tactics that are in the narcissist arsenal that he's gonna be employing, the more people that can come around you and offer you the support, the better off you're going to be. I realized very quickly that this was one of the things that served me the most when I was trying to leave the narcissist and I was going through a custody battle with the narcissist. It was the best for me because there were so many events that were layered on top of each other. So it was like he would do one outrageous act followed by another, by another, by another, and there was no accountability being had for any of these things. So writing them down not only helped me keep account of what was actually happening and making sure that I brought up and raised every single point that he was doing in the in court, but also so that my friends would be able to help remind me, remember when this happened or remember when that happened because it can be easy when you you keep hearing from, for example, his family and friends how great he is or how sorry he is or that he could change or whatever. Or maybe your church doesn't support you leaving the narcissist because they don't view this as an actual form of abuse. Or maybe you're, you just really are struggling to find support and people who would believe your story and you're not sure really what to do and how to handle that. And so in those cases, it's really important that you start writing everything down with the date next to it so that you have an accurate account for yourself, but also so that you start opening up to those who are closest to you, to those people that you trust because you're they're going to help bring to remembrance other things that maybe you forgot to raise earlier or to have him be held accountable for earlier and this is still to this day one of the best um, ways that my friends support me is that they rem remind me of issues where there would have been a court ruling made on a certain issue that he never did, for example, but I forgot about it simply because there had been so many court rulings and there had been so many other things going on at that time. And so having other people who could help bring to my mind the reality, the truth of the situation, helped me not only 
to navigate the narcissist gaslighting, but every other tactic that they were using in the meantime. Again, triangulation and isolation being some of the most common forms of abuse with narcissists. So really doing those two things. Also, if you saw my video last week about canned responses to a narcissist, you need to watch it. That video is going to help you free up brain power and brain space in dealing with a narcissist so that as the narcissist does things to you and as he brings certain things to you, you know, and employ all of these different tactics, you're going to be able to make a predetermined choice on how to respond to the narcissist. I'm not going to recap everything that's in that video. I just want to say, like, go watch it. I do want to say, however, just having that availability to say, this is how I'm going to respond. And if that response that I have predetermined in my heart to say to the narcissist isn't quite appropriate, I'm not gonna respond until I have peace about the situation. And honestly, sometimes it helps, again, to have that space to just recollect your thoughts and to not, to start separating, again, yourself from the narcissist, it's a process. And especially if you've been with a narcissist for a long period of time where many of your memories may be twisted, you need to be able to separate yourself and say, I have a journal filled with all of the things that had happened and with the dates next to them, and I'm gonna go find the accurate account of what happened use that to frame my response to the narcissist. Being able to have that kind of control over how you respond and not react to what the narcissist is doing is really gonna help you not only to separate and build your life after narcissism separate from the narcissist and learn healthy ways of communication, but also it's gonna maintain your inner peace, help you to set up healthy boundaries so that you attract healthy people into your life because again, Narcissism is a spirit, and if you don't deal with this in the spirit realm, you're going to continue to attract the same spirit in a different body. And so it's very important that you understand every single step that you're doing has numerous consequences. So it's not just the second and third reactions that you're going after, the consequences of what you're doing. It's literally setting your whole life up and also your children or any other people that may be involved in the process of leaving the narcissist so that you can teach them healthy ways to form relationships, how to spot healthy people, and how to protect yourself from toxic people as well. So I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about gaslighting, what it looks like, and what you can do to protect yourself from it, and as well as how canned responses can help you deal with um, gaslighting and other issues that the narcissist is going to be using in the cycle of abuse that they employ. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I'm Dr. Angel Storm, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.